Hey everyone, this is David Cito from 3D Roundhouse. I want to thank MakerBay for inviting me on this project to talk about 3D printing. Uh, very quickly about myself, I used to be a career banker and CFO, uh, but for the last six years, I've really fallen in love with 3D printing. And actually, I've been teaching uh, 3D printing uh, to children and adults about the fascinating world of 3D printing. For sure, it's a disruptive technology that's going to affect how we live for the next hundred years, easily. Uh, it's going to affect us in medicine. It's already affecting us in medicine. It's going to affect us how we live. It's even going to affect how we can occupy outer space. Uh, it's an amazing, amazing technology. Let me tell you about 3D printing uh, in this presentation that I put together for you. It'll explore different types of 3D printing technology and actually how it's going to be used. And after that, I'm going to show you a couple of videos where I put together some models that can be 3D printed. Okay, let's go for it. So before the pandemic came, I was able to teach. And after the pandemic, I wasn't able to teach. And so I took the time to write two books about 3D printing. Okay, these books are based on my experience as a teacher. I've learned that a lot of schools, they buy a 3D printer, but they don't know what to do with it. And it just sits there. So what I've done is I've taken the my course material and I put them into these two books. One is for a software called Tinkercad, which is for total beginners, and then something more sophisticated. And these I use to teach teenagers. So let me show you what I think 3D printer is. 3D printing is not just a machine. It's actually an entire process, okay? You have a model that you have to create. The model has to be sliced before it becomes an actual object. And actually, you, know, you can judge from the title of my book, 3D Printing Cookbook, there's a strong parallel between 3D printing and cooking, okay? You have ingredients that you have to put together and you have to combine those ingredients in a very specific way before you put it in the oven. And in fact, once you put the file into the 3D printer, it really is like looking at cookies baked in the oven, okay? It's a little bit slow, but when it's done, it's done. So let's talk about the 3D printers. The 3D printers are not just one type of machine. Now, the most common type are called the FDM printers, which you see here. And I'm sure a lot of you may have seen this in some kind of news uh, report or some magazine or in the, on the TV or on the internet, okay? So these printers use a uh, extruder, which is that orange part that you see. And then the tube leads to a roll of filament that is principally plastic. It's a type of plastic. And what happens is uh, the machine pushes the filament through the extruder and it creates a model layer by layer, building up over time. Okay, this is the most common type of machine. These are desktop machines that anyone can buy if you buy it, buy it in the store. So what can we make with this type of technology? It's an FDM printer, remember? So someone took this basic concept of the FDM, the extruder, and decided, hey, let's try to build a house. In fact, they actually did that. So instead of plastic filament, they use concrete. And this is in fact the type of house that they, that they built. So this company is actually based in the States, in Texas, and they're actually a nonprofit organization. They're trying to focus on the homeless situation around the world, which is super important. But this is their house. Uh, it's in the, I believe it's still in the testing stages. And so they're gonna see that, you know, how this, these type of houses work over time. Okay, so that's one type of use for this type of 3D printing technology. A second type of 3D printer is called an SLA printer, serial lithography. And actually this type of printer was invented by a fellow named Chuck Hull back in the 1980s. And instead of using a roll of filament, instead of a roll of plastic, it involves a little box that will contain a resin, right? There's the box. So they pour the resin into the box and what happens is a UV light shoots into the resin. And where the light hits the resin, it solidifies, it cures. And over time, layer by layer, the item is created. When it comes out, it has to go into a bath for further cleaning, and then you trim away the support material and there's your final product. So this is another type of 3D printing technology. And you can notice that it's actually a little bit soft. So what can we use with this type of uh, technology? Well, instead of uh, a resin, we use something called a bio ink. And what the BioInk does is it allows these researchers at Tel Aviv University back in 2019 to 3D print the first human heart. So what happened was the researchers took the stem cells of a patient 
and glue it into different muscles that make up the heart. So the veins, the, the muscles itself. And the implication of this is massive because what you're talking about is if you're able to grow your own stem cells into a body part, you don't have to rely on transplants anymore. And this is massive. This is a massive, massive thing. So the technology is there to save lives in the future. Another type of 3D printer is called SLS, uh, Selective Laser Synthesis. So this part, instead of plastic, instead of bio-ink, uh, uh, resin, they use powder. Now this 3D printer is huge, okay? It's the size of two refrigerators. And how this works is there's a tray of metal powder. And what happens is a laser shoots down into the top layer of the powder from the top. And when that happens, it fuses the powder together. The tray drops a little bit and a, an arm sweeps another layer of powder on top. And then at the end of the print, you sweep away the, excess, the surplus powder and then you can take out your 3D print. Now, what can we do with this? So what do you think this is, powder is, right? It's called the Chef Jet Pro. What do you think this is? Now, some students get it, but most don't. Okay, and I tell them there's a hint in the name, Chef Jet. Okay, people in the audience, what do you think this is? Look at it, it's beautiful. These are beautiful designs. Look at that, you can even put cartoons on it. Okay, so the answer is that powder is white sugar. Instead of shooting a laser into the top of the white sugar, we're actually shooting jets of water, steam, into the top. And once again, the tray drops a little bit and actually adds some food coloring. At the end of the day, what you get is candy. You get these beautifully designed geometric candy 3D printed. So this is uh, the future of 3D printing for food. Okay, this is actually part of the future. Look at these beautiful designs. Uh, there's chocolate, everybody loves chocolate. So materials is a very important part of the 3D printing environment. Okay, you have plastics we know about, we have metals, we have precious metals, okay? In fact, I even tell my students this, if you want to get a job in the future, look into material science, okay? Material science is a brand new field for 3D printers. You know, plastics is, is, is one thing, but if we can start 3D printing with other materials, like just recently, some governments have announced that they want to set up a lunar base on the moon. Just recently, China brought back some moon dust. So they're, I'm sure they're testing out being able to 3D print using moon dust. And if you could do that, you could just put a 3D printer on the moon and start building buildings. This is the future of 3D printing. The printers that you see here, uh, for example, this ink bit, that can take as many as 10 different materials with 17 different extruder heads. Object that you see there came out of the 3D printer just like that. So you can see that the exterior is solid, but the inside is soft. Another thing that comes out of these new type of 3D printers is material that can conduct electricity, as you see on the right. So that is the introduction of 3D printing. Uh, it's only just the beginning. Uh, please stay tuned for more. So that's just scratching the surface about 3D printing. There's so much more to come, okay? But first, in the next set of videos, I want to show you how exactly we create a model for 3D printing. So have a look.